All right, you guys, good evening. I'm really excited um, for tonight and our guests that we have on. Super, super, super excited. Um, trying to see if she's on real quick. Let me scroll down. Yep, Sarah, there you are. Okay, cool. I'm here. Yay. So, um, you guys, this weekend I got to spend tons of times, times, my brain's fried, by the way. Um, <laughs> time with leaders in Dallas and at the, um, try it training there. It was so incredible. Like so awesome. Brittany Hayes did phenomenal. And, um, we had over, it was a sold out event. Um, we raised $1,300 for a school in South Africa and which was really awesome. Um, and the girls did awesome down there. We had a bunch of guests, they signed up. It was great. And then we quickly flew over, um, minus the flash floods and everything that we experienced down in Texas. Um, we flew over to Minnesota and I got to see Kelly Joe, who I haven't seen in just forever. And that just made me so happy. And, um, we got to have an incredible event there with two girls that I know, but I didn't really know. And you guys, when I'm, when I say like events change you, they change you. Okay. Like these girls are like, we immediately were just like clicked and these girls inspire me. They are awesome. And I am so excited for tonight to have Sarah jump on, but real quick, we've got some announcements. Um, have you guys seen the clues that have been dropped about the new product? Yes. Does anyone want to take guess on what it is? And I will hide my camera so you can't see my face. <laughs> Because I cannot lie. Um, you guys are going to love it. And um, it's phenomenal. So good. Okay. Um, but pay attention to the hints. That should be launching this month. And um, I have heard a couple people say oatmeal. Not keto friendly. Negative ghost rider. So, um, but... I would get that by the clothes. Um, so with that being said, I'm excited for you guys. So be sure to invest in that new product. It is a limited supply. So that means it will sell out. Um, they're going to see, obviously we know that the keto creamer is exiting. Okay. Um, and so they, it's just not, a, a not a product that isn't other available. I guess we could say so. And, um, we have other products that are super awesome that have the same benefits. So, um, so with that, be ready for that. Philippines opens on the 20, officially the 24th, 27th. I have June and July's date or May and June's date mixed up, but this month, Philippines will officially open for business, you guys. So um, if you have Philippines contacts, potentials, you need to study the compensation plan. That is not for somebody to teach you. That is for you to go and download it and study it and be educated on it. Okay. It is different than ours. It is not the same. So don't even start talking to them about the compensation plan, pay or money until you download it and study it. It's not that hard. Um, it's actually very simple and it's awesome. It's really good. I almost wish that theirs was ours. Um, cause it's phenomenal, but, and then Mexico is next month. We're really shooting for June 24th, shooting for that to be the projected date, but we know how things can always change. We got to be open and flexible on that. Um, and then we have our retreat that is going to happen in October, which I'm really excited about. This is going to be, um, right now it's going to be for double diamonds and above. So that means you must be a double diamond or higher in order to come. And um, during the months of June, July, and August, you must be paid as at least a diamond during those, okay? So um, we're excited for the retreat. It will be here in Utah, October. Um, I'm trying to get a special guest to come. So it will either be the third through the sixth or the uh, 10th through the 13th. Okay. Thursday to Sunday. Um, one of those two weekends. So that way, um, cross your fingers that somebody can come and make it, but, um, I should have a, an exact date pretty soon. 
on the leadership retreat. And you never know, I may just open it up to diamonds, but um, it's going to be a really fun time. Anyone who's come to our retreats before knows that like these, they're life changing. They're so fun. You meet some of the coolest people. So uh, mark your calendars tentatively for that and keep pushing through the summer because that's, those are the qualifications. Okay. Follow me June, July, and August uh, diamond or higher double diamond right now it's for double diamonds, but We'll see how many diamonds go because definitely, shoot, we might kick out the doubles and triples and say we're only bringing diamonds, right? Sorry, guys. <laughs> we'll do something else for you. But um, but that's where I want you guys, your mindset to be. I know that there's lots of people pushing for promotions this month. And just remember, too, no matter what um, promotion you're going for, look at the long term, right? Look at the long term of this business. This business loves speed. Um, so pick it up and run when we are in this momentum, Okay. Went over new products, went over new countries, um, power hours. Everyone should be doing at least one power hour a day. Just one. You guys don't need to spend all day on your phone. Okay. Um, if you're crazy busy, you can still fit in an hour, a power hour every single day. And that should be a non-negotiable. If you need accountability, screenshot, message your upline, message your sponsor and let them know, Hey, I just finished my power hour. Perfect. Okay. So at bare minimum, when life is crazy and everything seems like it's falling from the sky. That is your minimum. I heard that if you take off a day, it's going to cost you a week of pay. If you take off a week, it could cost you a month. If you take off a month, it could cost you a year. And that's how the compound effect really works when you're working. And, and this is simple. You guys, this is so, so, so simple. So Tamika's opening up her power hours. Um, I know Amy Spence is doing them at 5 15 mountain standard time every morning. So if you you have kids, your life's crazy fit it in. Okay. Like be proactive about it and just, um, find out what's going to work for you. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see here. I think that was all of the announcements. Nope. I lied. Austin, Texas, June 2nd tickets went on sale. So buy your live stream ticket and plan a watch party with your team. Okay. Um, we want you guys to, even if you open your home or have a, a place where you're doing the watch party, we still want those people coming to purchase the live stream as well. So they have it for the 30 days. Okay. So is there anyone right now who is planning a watch party with their team on June 2nd? Lacey Carter. Lacey's always showing up. You guys like you need to follow her not me. Okay. Like she is just bomb. Lacey, anyone else? That's doing a watch party as of right now. Okay. So that's something, again, you guys, that, that you don't need to be a certain rank to do it. Gather some potentials, gather some friends, and get on that, okay? Melinda is awesome. So I will be in Austin. I will be on a panel. I will be doing a lot of MC work. So um, I'm excited for that. I actually need to buy my plane ticket. <laughs> um, so be there, be square, okay? This is uh, probably going to be the biggest event that we've done thus far with the most announcements. So you're not going to want to miss it. And then um, there's going to be over 20 ambassadors there teaching and training and um, helping you guys out with how to expand and build your business. So you're definitely going to want to do the live stream. Um, but I'm going to challenge you guys to all step up and do a watch party at your house with your team, but start promoting it now. Do, some are doing potlucks. Um, and if you guys can do it and promote it and then, um, let me know, then we can give some shout outs while we're in Austin and, and wave hi to you through the live stream. Okay. All right, you guys, I am so excited for tonight. I, me, Sarah is so sweet. First of all, she's like totally did this event, um, this weekend in Minnesota and she was so kind to pick us up from the airport and drive us all around. We went to church together. Uh, we went to breakfast, lunch, and then we had the training and she was so kind. We went to dinner afterwards. We had a four hour diamond and above dinner. That was just incredible. Like so amazing. Um, I can't believe we all sat there at a barbecue place for like four hours, but we did. And it was so great. So this is why you don't want to miss those events. But anyways, I wanted her to come on you guys 
um, and just share her story. And then we're going to jump into Q and A. So you guys know that I love giving you guys guest speakers to hear from other people. So in the chat, I want each of you to ask a question about the business life, incorporating the business. You guys, she has five kids and I'm pretty sure they're all back to back to back. She's going to share a little bit more, but like, this is no excuses. Like absolutely. You have, like I have two. Okay. She has five, five of them. I met them all. And to say her hands are full is an understatement. So Sarah, come on on. Where are you at? Hey. There we are. Tell us a little bit about you, why you're in the business, what got you started, where you're at now. I want to hear all about your story, girlfriend. All right. Well, hi. I just want to say first, I think I have the ID number now. So I might be sneaking onto all your weekly because I'm kind of in love with this so far. So if I have to change my name and sneak on so you don't know I'm here, um, consider that done because <laughs> I might be a part of your team now. Um, I am so excited to be on here. Um, if you guys haven't heard this before, I know that Amber is normal to you because she's been your leader for however long you've been in the business, but you guys are so incredibly blessed to have Amber as your leader. She is a gem of a person, um, a powerful speaker and motivator, and just being with her on Sunday, um, both my husband and I, our entire team that was there, just could not get over how incredible it was to have both her and Josh at the event, and just having them speak life into us. Um, you guys get it all the time. I want to tell you not to take that for granted because it is absolutely incredible to have her to speak into you all the time. So um, I just am really thankful that you came and spoke into our Minnesota team. I had my girls just were like, she's so loving. Like, why was she so nice to me? Like, you know, my you know diamonds and doubles, just incredibly blessed to just be able to speak to her for a little bit. So um, thanks, Amber. Come on. Like this, what? I had like, a, I'm like running on four hours of sleep. Okay. Like I'm already on the emotional breakdown. <laughs> well, I think you might just be a crier. You might just I, have to like, allow know, yourself to be that way. It's fine. And you can help on my Zooms anytime. I love okay, it. I'm here. I'm here. Um, uh, all right. So I'm Sarah. Amber already said I have five kids. That might be one of the more interesting things about me. So um, <laughs> it's the thing that like my claim to uh, something interesting. I have five kids. I became a mom. I became a wife at age 20 to my 20 year old husband. Um, we became pregnant five months into our marriage uh, after planning to not be pregnant for about two years because that seemed like the responsible thing to do. Um, but I had baby fever since I said, I do, I gave it up to the Lord. Um, and I said, God, if you don't want us to have kids, um, because my husband doesn't want us to have kids for two years, cause he's responsible and I run with my feelings, then I'm going to give that up to you. And about week, a week later, I found out I was pregnant. So I won, God heard my prayers louder than my husband's and I'm here for that. So thank you, God. Um, we had our first baby. I was 21 and I quit my job. I actually got let go from my job when I was like seven and a half months pregnant, which I was fine with because I was tired and I just wanted to be home. Um, we, I think a lot of assumptions of stay at home moms are, oh, your husband must have a good job and make a lot of money. That wasn't the case for us. Um, neither of us still to this day have a college degree. Um, uh, we barely graduated high school. Amber and I were joking about this. Um, on Sunday, barely graduated high school. My husband actually had a really kind teacher that passed him in math class, even though he should have failed, and then he wouldn't have graduated high school. So we just graduated with the skin of our teeth. Um, and you know, now we're this young, these young parents, 21 year old parents that um, really are like paycheck to paycheck, paycheck to almost paycheck is a little bit more um, accurate. And we live that way. We, you know, we say we had one kid and we were broke. So what's two kids and broke? And then what's three kids and broke? And then four kids and broke. Like it's you're broke the whole time. Kids are expensive and you're just broke all the time. So it just was our normal. Um, for seven years, I was a mom who had no money, who lived paycheck to almost paycheck and who looked for every opportunity to, to work online because I knew with four kids, there was no way that I could work outside the home. So I finally, um, Claire Flores, uh, she's my upline. She's my enroller. She's incredible. Um, I know you guys probably a lot of, you know who she is. She's as amazing as you think she is. 
um, just an incredible person behind the scenes. She's become my best friend, and I can tell you that she is as genuine and awesome um, as you think that she is in real life. So um, she posted that she was making $500 a month her first after her first 30 days in the business. And that got my attention because $500 a month meant that we could stop living paycheck to almost paycheck. That was life-changing for us. And I told my husband, what if? And I thought it would be a, a freaking miracle if we could make $500 a month. I said, I'll give it a year. Hopefully we can make $500 a month in a year. Um, <clears throat> my littlest baby was about a year. And I said, I'm going to do this for myself. I am basically like, you know, we're done having kids. Like, let's do it. I'm going to do something for myself. So I start in the business. Um, a month after I get started in the business, a friend of mine needs daycare for her toddler. I take that toddler in, like, I'll help you out. So now I have five kids. Um, a month after that, we get our surprise foster son. My husband's brother had a child that they weren't able to take care of. And so right from the hospital, we go and pick up this eight day old baby. And, um, and that same month I went Ruby. So my second month in the business, I went Ruby. My third month, I brought my husband Ruby. Seven months in, we went diamond, um, all with these five kids and daycare girl on top of it. So it was insanity, but I had a vision. My vision was to make $500 a month. And when I made that happen, my vision was to match my husband's income. And I did that at Diamond. Because remember, he didn't make that much money. We were pretty broke. Um, so that was like that $2,000 a month. I made a little bit more than him some months in that Diamond period. And um, double a year after that, triple two years later. And that's where I'm sitting right now, presidential this month. So um, that is my story. And... Um, the vision that I had because I had a leader that told me it was possible and showed me it was possible. And I latched on to that. I latched on to the trainings of Jade Hooper. I latched on to anybody that I could see that was making it happen. And I said, if they can make it happen, I can. And that's how I did it. No excuses. I love it. I love it. So when you were going Ruby in that, in that second month and, and diamond during the process, how did you mainly build your business? Was it through social media or was it belly to belly? I did no belly to belly, uh, like at all. Um, I think it's a great way to work your business and it's something that I've been wanting to incorporate for a really long time, but I have always been hundred percent social media. So with social media and five kids and you guys, like we think a job and one kid is hard or we're like, oh my gosh, my husband is my child and I have to take care of him <laughs> all day. Like whatever the case may be, how did you, and what did you do every day that were your non-negotiables? What can, what can you tell the mom or not the mom, right? Um, to go diamond even quicker. I feel like once we've done it, we can teach you how to do it quicker because we know the, mm -hmm. what not to do. Right. So what did you do? What would you suggest that they do? What are your, some non-negotiables that helped make you and just push through that diamond. So I would say my first two months, what my biggest tips are for anybody in their first two months is in every single moment of your day, have self-development on. And what I mean by self-development in your first two months of the business is find the top leaders of It Works Global on YouTube and watch every single one of their videos um, and immerse yourself in training of people that have made your goals happen. Um, I will always say my first couple months of the business were not balanced by any means. I can picture sitting on my sofa with my kids all around me, um, getting up to make lunch and getting up to quickly clean up before my husband got home. So he didn't think I was, you know, maybe I would brush my teeth before he got home. So he thought I was at least taking care of my personal hygiene, although I wasn't really. And in that first couple months, I just sat and it was a blur of black, green and bling and training videos. and not knowing what I was doing. And I just kept going and I kept that belief high. And your first going up to diamond in that first seven months was a roller coaster of being at the top of the world one moment. And then being at the, like, I'm going black diamond with this company. This is amazing. I found my home. I'm so good at this to literally a minute later being like, I will never sign a loyal customer. Why did I think I could do this? And being open with my, with Claire about that and talking to her and having her talk me out of it being open and honest with my feelings and just keeping on going and keeping that belief strong because I would reach out when that was happening. And I just, I didn't give myself an opportunity to quit. And I said, I've got to make this work. 
I love that. So obviously, so how do you find time? This is a question. How do you find time when your kids are having the pay attention to me day? She says, I have one kid and I'm struggling to get everything done. What, what would you say to that? Like one kid struggling to get everything done. You had five help us out, man. Right. I say one kid is harder than five. And, and here's why, because my kids would play with each other. They have their built-in playmates. Um, with one kid, I would say find a friend that also has one or two kids and get together with them on a regular basis so that your kid can play with their kids. And work, um, right? Yeah. I mean, honestly, if your kid can play with another kid so that you can work for a while, awesome. That's great. That was how I got through because my kids were used to playing with each other all the time. So I would just say, go play. And yeah, I, you have to give your kid love and attention. Um, yeah, have another kid. <laughs> get busy. Um, I, I just, I mean, you just love on them when they need love. Pam Souter always says this. She says, husband and kids are the same way. If you give them a really undivided, like 20, 30 minutes, that's all they need. They then they'll go and play and do their thing. And, and you know, then you can get down to, down to business and they don't need you right every second of the day. Yeah. And that was, I think for me too, but I think with one kid as well, like if you're self-disciplined, one kid, two kids, 10 kids, it's essentially all the same. You guys, we have kids, we feed them, they have mouths, they have like butts to wipe. Like we are doing the, the, all of it all day long. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just how much, how many times. Right. But I think too, it's a discipline thing. It's a personal discipline where it's like, you either got to wake up in the morning earlier than your kids and do it then. So that way anything else just folds into your day or you set times throughout the day. When does your child nap? When do they eat lunch? When are they on the toilet? Like post here, post there, follow up there. Like you fold it into your day and then it, and then you can still get everything done too. You know, it's just, it, I may only get 10 messages sent out before seven o'clock in the morning. And some days I might get 35 sent out you know, depending on that day, but I'm going to do all of it every day. I can do more though. If, and sometimes mm -hmm. I won't do more. I'll do less. I love that. Mm -hmm. What are your favorite parts of working your business? What are your favorite parts? My favorite parts is that I get to connect with women, um, from all areas of life and all seasons of life and connect and hear stories and encourage them that they can have the life that they dream of and that they can have more. And not only can they have more, but they were made for more and designed for more. And that when God made women, he made us to do, to do many things. And if we are allowing ourselves to be just something, I don't care what that is. Um, ju even just a networks distributor and just a mom and just a wife, I still have more to do. And God made me for more and he made other women for more. And it doesn't matter if you're doing 50 things or you're doing one thing, you still have the capacity for more because God made you to do bigger things than you can imagine. And so when I'm talking to women, just instilling that belief, um, that, you know, God has more for you. And if it's this business, let's do it together. But I want to hear your story. I'm not going to try to sell you on this because it, it's, it sells itself, but we're going to talk and we're going to get to know each other. And I'm going to tell you why this business can work within your lifestyle and how, you know, it can be used to not only reach your goals, but do even more than that. And let's talk about that. So I just love talking with people and getting to know people. And as a stay at home mom, I think that can be really lonely. And as women in general, we just crave connection. And to be able to connect with people every day is your job. Like, yes, please sign me up for that. That's my favorite thing. So then I'll ask this question before another question. Um, when signing up distributors and working social media, how do you get your distributors? Do you message? Is it attractive marketing? Do you share your story 27 times a day? How do you get distributors? Because I think if everyone could focus on getting more distributors, that's where your business grows. That's where your team grows. That's where your volume grows. You can sign up 70 million customers, but ultimately you always need distributors. So how do you get distributors? Um, it's been different throughout my business. I feel like at the beginning, I messaged a lot more than I do now. However, I'm filling that pull to message more. I think it's a good use of time because you can send out a lot of messages in a short amount of time. Um, I always say if I'm not in new conversations every day, then I need to switch up what I'm doing. That's my measure of if I'm doing the right thing. Um, I have I think in our training company-wide, it's kind of like we've hit seasons where like messaging is king and then all of a sudden another leader comes in that's killing it and she's like, don't ever message. 
I just think you do what works for you. And it doesn't matter what I do or what Amber does or what Jade Hooper does or what whoever does. As long as you're getting in new conversations every day, you're doing the right thing. However, so this is how I do it though. I normally will just share my story over and over and over again in my Instagram story, my Facebook story. Um, I use those highlights. Um, and you know, one of them just says work from home. And that is my story in there over and over and other people on my team stories. Um, and I get a lot of people to message me from there on, from Instagram. Um, and yeah, I guess attraction marketing. And like I said, I'm going to go back into messaging. I did it for a season of my business and it is such a good way to just get into conversations. That is key. If you can start a conversation, you've got a potential for life until she signs. Like that's a win in my book for sure. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So again, you guys, what she's meaning is if you're happy with your results, then you're doing the right thing. But if you aren't happy with your results, as in you're not completing your steps to success every month, then do something different. Do it all. Actually do the mm -hmm. highlight, do the messaging, do the, the good pictures. You only need 30 of them to have one a day, right? So go do a photo shoot on the first of the month and have your pictures teed up for the whole entire month. Um, do something different. If you're not producing results that you want or that are getting you to your goal that you keep saying you want to get to. I love that. So what quiet kind of questions do you ask your new distributors to know what their goals are um, and how to support them? Like when you sign up a new distributor, what questions do you ask so you can be the best leader for them? You know, I think that it's so important to just connect with somebody at a heart level um, to really get to know somebody because the reality is, like I said, you know, in my, I'm not unique and that the first seven, eight year, you know, seven, eight months to a year of my business is a literally a roller coaster of up and down, not daily by minute, by minute, by minute, we're up one second, we're down the next. And that's a reality for everybody in this business. And I was immersed in self-development and that was still my reality. But my enroller knew why I wanted this business. And not only that, but she cared enough about me to love me and believe in me. And so I think that it's so important to A, know why your teammate is in this business, why your new distributor is in this business. So you can always go back to that and be like, man, I know it's so hard that, you know, your mom just told you that you joined a scam. I know that's so hard that, you know, I relate, 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 um, on whatever level you can relate on to whatever they're dealing with. Cause you can, cause you've been in this business long enough, even if it's just for a day that you can relate to struggles that somebody's having. Um, so relate to that and then say, um, you know, but I know that we can get through that. And I know that you being able to pay for groceries for your family is going to be so worth it. Imagine what that's going to feel like when you get that first $500 in your, you know, pay portal. Let's go ahead and let's work past this. Um, and then also to just instill your belief in your distributors. I think that every conversation that I have with a distributor that's having a hard time is just simply me saying like, I believe in you, like you can do this and instilling that belief until they have it on their own. Oh, I love that. Um, oh, dang it. I just lost what I was going to say. Shoot. I was going to go right off of that. Um, when you have people, we're, like she said, you guys, you're going to have days when you're at the highest high in the morning and by noon, you're like, throw in the towel. Nobody talk to me. If my messenger breaks, I'm not mad about it. Like you're going to have those days. Um, or literally today I like threw my phone across the room. That's legit. Like I was like, I, if it breaks, I'm not mad about it. It's kind of <laughs> there. And, I, was, I, and I, I was just one of those days. So you're going to have them. Um, but it literally makes a difference. It's like, you can shift like so fast when you know that you have a tool and a resource to do that. I love that. Now you were, you were talking in the language of increase when you were just talking about how you coach and train your distributors. How do you find out their goals? And I'm curious to see if anyone recognized the words that she used that are leadership words that are language of increase. I might have a surprise if somebody knows what she said. Anybody want to take a, a wild guess? If you were listening to how she was talking, and I bet Sarah's probably like, I don't even know how I was talking, but <laughs> does anyone know? I've, I've shared this a couple times. She was saying things like, we, let's, us. Let's work together through this. Yeah, this is an us thing, you guys. And so when your team is struggling, what can we do about it? Let's do this together. It's always we lets us in leadership. It's not you and it's not I. It is we lets us. 
Jess nailed it. Jess Wells, getting a bag of hydrate. There you go. <laughs> I love it. You guys, paying attention to leaders that, that are where you want to be, watch their language. Watch how they coach. Watch how they talk. Watch how they respond versus react. Okay? Love that. Okay, there was another question that I had. Um, how do you work with your team? What systems do you have to be in contact with everyone if you are in contact with everyone? And I, um, yeah, we'll start there. What systems do you have and how do you communicate with your team? Do you have a page? Do you have group chats? What are your thoughts on group chats? How do you tell us all the goods? Okay. So I will be the first to admit that I, um, well, I just heard recently that, uh, my friend was reading a book and she was sharing with me that when you are struggling with creating a habit. So for me, I like, I need to start creating habits of being an organized person. And she said, until you change your identity, until you start saying who I am is an organized person, um, that you can't say, Oh my gosh, I'm so unorganized. I need to work on that. It's not going to become a habit for you. Um, until I start saying I'm an organized person, I will never be organized. So I'm currently an organized person working on creating systems um, that are going to help me to connect with my team at a better level because that is something that's a struggle for me. And um, because I'm so relational, like um, I just, I have it written down on a sticky note and I did this about a year ago when I was struggling to connect with my team. I said on the sticky note as a yellow person, I said, I am um, the best in my business when I'm best friends with everybody on my team. And so for me, I'm just connecting and I'll, I write out a list of my distributors and I have it just, you know, on my desk in my office, which is a disaster. Um, but whenever I'm feeling like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm not connecting with my team. I go grab that list and I say, who have I not connected with? Um, and I just send personal messages out. Hey babe, how are you? Just a quick voice message. Hey, how are you doing? Um, I have my leaders in a group chat, um, because I like to like leaders by leg or like the, uh, like maybe the the diamond and the emerald and the ruby or something like that in chats. Um, and that way I can like bounce ideas off of them. I don't think that, you know, I should be coming up with all the ideas for my team on my own cause I'm not that smart. And so I like to be able to bounce ideas off of people. I also have a double diamond and above um, weekly Zoom that we do where we do the same thing. We bounce ideas off each other and we discuss what we're like the topic of our next Sunday night Zoom is going to be. Um, and as far as my new distributors, I just make sure to check in with them every single day. I, I like teach and I, I forget who said it, but I heard it from a leader a couple years ago that you should teach or train treat your new distributors as though you're, they're still your potential. And with potentials, we follow up with them all the time. And when somebody like joins my team, I'm going to follow up with them all the time. It's fo It's literally follow up. That's, that's what I'm doing with my new distributors for months until they like, you know, until I feel like I can kind of let off a little bit and I'm not annoying them. And same thing if they don't, if they don't respond to me for like a couple of days, then I'll like let off a little bit and I'll go to like a weekly follow up with them and how you doing? Let's get, let's get going. But it is that like, I'm on top of them all the time so that they know that I'm still there for them. I love that. And to you guys, like treat them as if you're, they're your best friend and, and a potential, like be in communication with them. And, and I'm sorry, but I think I was eight months into triple when I finally couldn't be in contact with every single person every single day. And now you guys have connect app. There's no reason you cannot be in communication with your downline every single day. Not just the ones that are running. Those are actually the ones that you should probably like not communicate with as much. Yeah. I remember when Cammy reached out to me and she goes, Hey, by the way, the people that you hang out with every day, they don't need you. You guys need to separate. And I was like, huh? She was like, my dad told me and Tiffany Pasek, we, neither of us are going to grow if we keep hanging out with each other. We both need to grow our businesses and then we'll be, we'll be grateful when you guys come together once or twice a week. You know, you have to, you can't depend on each other. It's easy. It's comfortable. So who's that leader on your team that you're like, yeah, I communicate with her every day and it makes you feel good. Sure it does. But it's actually affecting your business elsewhere because you're not focusing on the people that actually need you. Um, in a different way, in a leadership way. And so that's some, something to look at too, you guys, is really connect with those people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and even if it's liking, commenting, engaging, it's building that relationship every day. I love that, love that. Um, and uh, some, something I'll add real quick too, and Sarah, maybe you can bounce off of this, is 
I try to think like Sarah had an amazing upline when she, you know, still does when she, when she started, she had a great sponsor. I didn't. And so I saw all the things that didn't happen to me. And I'm still to this day working on that recognition gifts. I wasn't given anything recognition at all. Nothing like, so that for me is a struggle. Like I'm like, cool. They went, they went emerald. Great. Go diamond. Awesome. Like that's a struggle for me. And I know that that's a struggle for me. So recognizing and looking at different leaders in leadership, some are going to come into your space and tell you exactly what you want to do. And there's others that are going to show you exactly what you don't want to do. Neither is here nor there. It is not right. It's not wrong. It's who do you want to be? And that's also why you need to veer away from your leaders that you built, right? You built these leaders, you raised them up. You know what they're doing in your downline, reach up, reach out, find an accountability partner that, or even just a friend that you can bounce ideas and mentorship off of. I love that. So next one I want to talk about is Sarah, what do you feel or how do you feel about like sideline relationships? Is it crucial? Is it not crucial? Should it happen recently, sooner than later sidelines and why? So I will have a pretty strong stance on this. Um, I will say that I didn't come into this business to make friends. Like I have friends. I've had the same, like really close best friends for since like through my church that I grew up in, um, like went to school with friends from church and school. So I like have had my best friends. I didn't, I didn't need friends. Um, I needed money, but I came in and, um, I joined exactly a month after Claire Flores and Katie Rogers. If you guys don't know Katie Rogers, she's an incredible leader that is everything I want to be and more. Um, and so, and, and Katie is on Claire's top line and, um, has nothing to do with my business. So she's my true sideline. They have become my best friends. We talk every day. Um, and I cannot tell you how many, like I can look back in my three and a half years of this business and think that I would have quit multiple times if I didn't have their influence and friendship. So for me in my personality and my being, um, uh, a yellow that still needs to develop discipline in her life and self, you know, uh, what am I trying to say? Self like discipline in order to keep going. Um, I knew that if I quit, then I wouldn't have the friendship that I have with them in the same capacity. And that cut me in. And that's just me being like really real and honest. I've gone through some really difficult times in my business where I'm like, I don't really want to do this anymore. But if I don't do this, Katie's going to yell at me and she'll probably like be really mad at me for a lot of months. And maybe like our friendship will never be the same. And Claire will cry for all of her days. And I don't think I really want to do that to my friends. So I think it's so important. Um, And we look at the people that joined at the same time that we did and the people that got connected with friendships. And this is what I'll always say. People come for the money, but they stay for the friendships. So I don't care if it's a sideline, if it's an upline, if it's a downline, if it's somebody like that's not even like in your sideline at all, but they're like on somebody else's like totally different team. If you can create relationships, you will have a better time in this business. And um, I just search them out. Katie messaged me and she's like, girl, I think you're so fun. This is like a month or two into the business where we had like been in a group chat together, but we'd never talked privately. And she messaged me. She's like, I just want to say, I think you're so funny. And like, I just really like that, you know, your input and blah, 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 all this stuff. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like she messaged me. You guys, people want to be messaged. They want to be said like, hi to, and I think you're cool. You just message some, a sideline that, and I promise that we'll get a relationship going. And it is super duper worth it and super fun. And I just, just do it. It's worth it. I love it. You know, my, like I always talk about you guys, my greatest friendships, my best friend came from a, from a, a, a training, like show up and, and, and pay attention while you're on Zooms. Who do you see on here that you're like, I would love to do coffee with her. I don't know where, if she lives in Utah, Minnesota, uh, Washington, I don't really know where she lives, but man, I'm going to reach out to her. You guys can become best friends, mm-hmm. you know? And, and I want you to be brave in that aspect too, as you guys build this business, um, reach out to the people that you want. I had a girl this weekend, very similar to, she reminded me so much of Lacey. And I was like, go reach out to her. And she was like, like, Lacey, like, will she, will she respond? She says, will she add me? And I was like, like, ex- wait, that's my team. You, yes, she will. And if she don't, she's in trouble. Like, <laughs> 
Yes. Lacey will add you. Like you can message her. Like she's great. So like be open to what possibilities you guys, you might be like, I don't ever want friends. Cause I was betrayed by friends. This is different. Trust me. Like this is different. Okay. Um, and so I want you guys to, I want to challenge you tonight to reach out to somebody on here that you want to make that connection with other than your, then, uh, you know, your, your top leaders that you're always in communication with. I want you to reach out to somebody and say, let's do coffee. Let's do a zoom. Let's connect. Here's my phone number. I want to be accountable with you. That's what we need is, is like she said, we'll stay for friendships. And there was many times that that was all I had. I never had an upline, you guys like ever, <laughs> like it's just crazy. So, um, my sidelines got me through the hardest times and you will have hard times. This is not easy ship sailing, like, oop, sails up. Let's just go. No, especially around promotion time. This is what I found. The devil will come to get you good, right? Like good. And so I'm warning you now we're getting ready to close up this month. Be prepared. Something's going to happen. And it's just up to you whether that means you're going to flip over um, and say, okay, you know what? It's just not going to happen. Or you're like, uh-uh, not today, Satan, not today. And you just keep pushing through, right? Sarah, have you ever had, um, what's like one of the hardest things you've had to do in this business? Um, whether it was something that happened in life or in your business, what was one of the hardest things? So recently I was lifetime ranked double diamonds. Um, recently, like in the last what month is it? Like, man, time really flies. Recently, like within the, in the last year, probably like eight months, nine months ago, um, I was lifetime rank double diamond paid as, I want to say I got down at one point to even being paid as like ruby or emeralds. Um, and my paychecks were really low. And we uh, kind of relied on my paychecks, like at least a diamond paycheck. And I was only paid at Ruby Emerald for like one. No, I wasn't paid for, I was paid diamond. That was my lowest that I ever got was paid diamond, but still like my paychecks weren't great. And it was really a struggle. And I had lost like everybody. I had one strong elephant leg of this girl that was killing it. And I was feeling really inadequate because she was really amazing and everything that I'm not, and we're very opposite personalities and she's amazing and I love her. She's incredible and I'm very thankful for her and I'm blessed to have her and I'm blessed to know her, but it's hard. It's really hard when somebody, when your group volume is going higher and higher and higher and you're not going anywhere in your business and you're seeing somebody else like literally talk about comparing yourself when you can see somebody's E-suite like that there's really no more comparing. <laughs> so that was difficult. I was in a really low place. And then my husband got offered this job opportunity where it's in sales. And, um, you know, he, all of a sudden we were like, dang, he's probably going to make a lot of money here pretty soon. And all of a sudden my why, which had turned into at this point, um, I'm going to be a baller you know, businesswoman who's going to make a ton of money and we can have all of our dreams on my income kind of got dashed because all of a sudden now my husband is going to have a baller income where we're going to have all this money and all of our dreams can come true off his income. And I was in this low point in my business. It all was like this perfect storm. And for a month, maybe two months, I was lost. I was lost. I feel like I didn't have a why. I feel like my enrollments were down because of it. I feel like I was just kind of spinning. And I remember, I will always remember, I was out to dinner with Ryan, my husband, and we were just talking and he just like was asking me really good questions. And I poured all of that out to him, which I just told you guys. And I was like, I just don't know why I'm doing this anymore. Like, I don't know. And he said some things that were like, neither here nor there. And then he said, you can never go back to just being a mom. You love what you do and you're good at what you do and God made you for what you do. You can never go back to just being a mom. You would be so bored. He compared me to this other mom that he knows and he's like, imagine having her life. You would hate that life. You'd maybe love it for like a week and then you'd be so over it. He's like, and on top of that, this business brings out the best in you and it brings out the best in you because you allow it to bring out the best in you. And you know, you are a changed person because of this. This I don't care about the money. He's like, sure, maybe I will make a ton of money. He's like, 
But if you give up an opportunity to be your best self, be the person that God made you to be, because maybe I'm going to make money and you don't have to, you're really giving up more than just a potential paycheck. And that was when I realized that my why it doesn't have to be wrapped up in like our financial dreams one day. And yeah, is it going to be? And am I still making more than him? I sure am by a lot. I'm still the baller businesswoman of the house, breadwinner, uh, sugar mama, and proud of it. Um, but at the same time, is that like my biggest reason for doing this business? No, and it can't be for me. And maybe it is for you. And that's awesome. I'm not that motivated by money. I'm motivated by the dream of having my Minnesota like lakeside cabin one day, and that motivates me. But if my husband can do that, then what do I have? Why am I in this business? So I just like had to come to that point where I needed to know, and that's what Ryan had. That's why we're a team. That's why we have, you know, that's why I have a husband. I'm, I'm no, not very good without him. Iron sharpens iron. You need somebody in your life to be there for you when you're in that rough space to tell you, you are made for this business you are here for a reason. And if you quit, you're missing out on more than just a paycheck. So true. So true. And you guys, you have to be um, open to hearing that possibly from a sideline, from an upline, because you do. And my why shifts all the time, like all the time. Um, and I think if it's not shifting, you're not growing, right? And do, go, diving into that personal development every single day and making sure that you are constantly expanding your mindset so you can dream a little bit bigger um, because the impossible is possible and you can have that through this company. Um, Sarah, let's end. What was the greatest moment in your business? So you guys, I mean, obviously, you know, right now pushing towards presidential and you've had, I'm sure a lot of ups and a lot of downs. We always have more ups than downs, but the downs can seem really hard, but what's the greatest reward, the greatest moment, the, oh my gosh, it was worth it all. What was that for you in this business? Man, that's a good question. Why have I never been asked that before? I feel very unprepared for like that question seems so easy, but I feel really unprepared for that. Um, Gosh, I mean, I'm thinking even back to like, and it sounds silly, but like even going Ruby, some, for some reason going Ruby was such a good promotion for me because that unlocked the possibility for everything. Because my first goal was Ruby. So when that happened, all of a sudden I was like, dang, I can go Black Diamond if I went Ruby. Um, and then even, you know, more recent, just realizing that if I can, my word of the year this, word, this year is faithful. and realizing the power of being faithful and knowing that if I can do what I know I need to do, and if I can grow and if I can learn in the ways that I know that I need to grow and learn, then God truly will do the rest. And I think the greatest moments of my business are always wrapped up in the reality that my faith is growing and the reality that I see God as a God who doesn't only want to provide for my needs, but also wants to provide for so much more. And when I know that, you know, when I go to him and I say, God, if I'm not ready for my next leader, what do I need to learn? Mm -hmm. And God, if I'm not ready for my next, you know, for my next distributor, what is it that you need to teach me? What is it that I need to develop within myself to be ready to lead the next person that you're going to bring to my team? And every single time that I ask that, I feel like God just unlocks another level of my faith and where it's just like, I trust him more. I need him more. And, you know, from that, my business grows. And I think it's a, it's not the answer that you asked me. It's not, I'm not answering your question really. You are. But overall, oh, that's perfect. Okay. Overall, I think that just looking back and it's been, it'll be four years in August at the end of August. And I think looking back, the greatest win of my business is that I'm not the person that I was. Oh, I'm turning into Amber. Um, <laughs> is that I'm not the person that I was. And when my husband said all that stuff to me at the restaurant and talking about how I am this person that I am and um, even just like the confidence that this business has brought, um, that I used to think that I wasn't like you guys, I joke now that I like barely graduated high school, that I failed out of college, but that defined me for a long time. And it defined me that I was a young mom and all I was good at was being a mom. And all I was good at was like, you know, leading Bible study, which is so great. And I'm so grateful for those times in my life. And God taught me so much through that. 
But being successful in direct sales is something that everybody tells you that you can't do. And so then when you show them wrong and you show yourself, you show them, I, I, I'm sorry, God doesn't change the world in a box. And God can use a person like me for his glory and showing people that he does more than you can imagine. And more than you can imagine equals creating a six-figure income, doing direct sales when you failed out of college. And if God wants to use me in that, I'm going to have confidence in myself that I can be disciplined enough to do this, that I can be relational enough to do this, and that God is going to do the rest, and that God made you for more. And if that's all that I can have win-wise in this business, I mean, the paycheck is amazing. Don't get me wrong. Like when we get that deposit in my bank account every month, I'm like, heck, like, is this real life? But the fact that I'm not who I used to be, like, that's the biggest win. That's the biggest win. Yeah. I love that. I feel the same way. But you know, what I love too is I don't ever want to forget that Ruby moment. I don't Mm -hmm. ever want to forget the Christmas where my parents paid it for our kids Christmas and we bought each other socks that I'm wearing right now, seven years later. Um, because they're only my like nighttime socks and like, I, I don't want to forget those moments. Right. But I, I surely want to see and cast a vision to where I want to go. Right. And like you said, you are, you are such a different person today, confidence wise. And, um, imagine where you're going to be. You're not done yet, you know? And, um, personal growth is awesome and phenomenal. And I always say, if you want your check to go, you must grow. And if you're not willing to grow, your check won't go either. And that, that is, um, it's so crazy that you said your word is faithful because this last year right here on my door, I always say, and every morning I want my faith and my finances to grow together. I don't Mm -hmm. want my faith to grow without my finances. And I don't want my finance to grow without my faith, because if I'm not faithful and I lose my finances, then I can always do more right? I can always have that faith. And so, um, but with that being said, that means I'm going to be put in positions where my faith is tested and it's rocked and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to question and I'm going to need to push through harder things and harder times. And, um, I'm reading a book right now, you guys, that is called mom set free. And it's basically, I'm in chapter four chapters and I like missed a zoom because I was so into this book. Um, But it just talks about how we have so much pressure of getting it all right as moms. And we won't, right? And um, there's been recently where I'm like, I'm I'm a crappy mom. I know how to be wife. I know how to be friend. I know how to be business. I know how to work. I know how to show up and, you know, and I'm exhausted. I know how to do all that thing. I know how to do all of it. But I suck as a mom. And I can use the excuse that I didn't have a great mom. I can use the excuse that I still don't have a freaking mom. Like I can, I can say all those things, but ultimately you guys, you have to grow right now. And if you're excited about what you did three months ago, you're not growing. If your, you know, biggest moment is like, oh yeah, remember that time when we're not growing. We need to be excited about where we're going every single day, every single week, every single month. And that's a personal thing that has to come from you. Okay. Um, pouring into your team, pouring into you, pouring from like getting something from somewhere. And when I saw this book on Instagram, all I saw was mom and I messaged a girl and I was like, what book is that? And I immediately bought it. And literally like 10 people have messaged me, Amber, are you reading that book? I want it. Are you, re- tell me what it was. How great is it? I don't know, but all I know is I'm four chapters in and I can't put it down. Like it's great. Um, Sarah, anything you want to leave us with tonight that can just continue these girls, um, and guys, um, for the rest of this month to push for these promotions. I think that promotions are decided at this point in the month. And I think that at this point in the month is when we can look at, you know, we're at that point in the month where there's what, like 10 days left or whatever. And we look at where everything's at right now. And we make the decision at the beginning of the month. It's like, Oh my gosh, we're doing this. I'm so excited. This is happening. Uh, My team is on fire. It's the first we're coming out of the 30th and it's the first down we're doing this. And then we get to the 20th and the 20th is where like the rubber hits the road because you look at your volume and you say, Oh dang, like I thought I was going to be thousands further than I am right now. And I don't really know, or hundreds or wherever, whatever rank you're going for, whatever the jump is for you. I thought it was going to be so much closer. 
guess what? You can make the decision today to say, I thought it was going to be so much closer. We've got more work to do. Let's go. Cause this is still happening. Or you can say, Oh man, I guess, you know what? That's okay. That's okay. Next month, we're, we're going to make it happen. Next month is our month. You know, June is our month. Let's do it. We're going to do it in June. And you can be excited about that. And so I think that just remembering that if you made a goal on the first, God still has plans to fulfill it on the 31st, but you, for 31st, but you've got to dig the ditches. And, you know, I don't know if you guys have read, I think it's a book by Stephen Furtick or a sermon or something like that years and years ago where he said, um, you know, if you want God to bring the rain, you've got to dig the ditches. And so I would just encourage you, you've been digging those ditches. There, there's a story in the Bible. It's not just like a random saying. There's like a story in the Bible where, um, you know, this God promised these people rain, but they had to go out and they had to dig the trenches first. Because what happens when God rains down blessings and we don't have trenches to hold them? then the blessings just go by the wayside and they're not utilized in the way that he wants them to be utilized. So when we dig the ditches, I always say he will overflow them, but we better start digging our best so that he has the opportunity to overflow them. Um, and so I would just say, you've been digging all month, keep digging. Because what's going to happen is God will send the rain and he will overflow that. But you have to make the decision today that no, it's still happening. I decided it was going to happen and it's still happening. And there has been so many months where like I sit there on the 20th and I'm like, I don't know how it's going to happen, but it's going to. And if you stop pushing now, I promise it's not going to happen. If you have any doubt in your mind, it will not happen. But if you keep that mindset of it's going to happen, it's going to happen. You wake up every morning and it's going to happen. You lay down every night and it's going to happen then the, the actions will follow that mindset. And you guys have heard that so many times, but I think it's valid on the 20th of every month to remind yourself, no, 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 this is when the rubber hits the road. This is when my mindset decides my future. This is when I decide to keep going, even though it maybe seems impossible on the 20th. What felt possible on the first is possible on the 20th if you make it possible and you make it happen. Mm, I love that, you guys. If she's dropping fire, I want it in the chat. Like, so good, Sarah. Like, why are you so good? So good, so good to us. We just love you. I can't thank you enough. Um, you guys, the best way to return this favor is one, like, thank her for her time in the chat. Thank her on social media um, that she has just taken an hour of her time and poured into you guys. But don't just sit on it. Take it and go dig some freaking ditches. Like, go in the trenches. Push and and dig deeper than you've ever thought capable or imagined, right? Like you can move mountains right now and go from Ruby to Emerald and build a Ruby in the next 10 days. That's possible, you know? So you just got to put your mind to it. I love that. Um, Sarah, thank you. Thank you so much. We love you. Um, you guys, I will get the recording up on the team page to tag your teams that we're on tonight. And, um, reminders that this did shift until to 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Times. Thanks, Karen, for reminding me. I've been in the groove of 7 p.m. for 27 years, and I'm like, uh, 8 p.m. So, Sarah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. We will see Emeralds and Above on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. I love you all. Have a good night. Thanks, Sarah. Bye.